and their, their argument is they're defending America under parties of both administrations. Um, the only thing you can do in a, in a congressional cross-examination is try to make it more about legitimate policy differences uh, and more about maybe even the fog of, of different uh, approaches to different countries and foreign policy than the facts. I, I think Fiona Hill was very effective at all of the part about Bolton because we have been tracking this and I, I won't bore everyone in depth but we even have uh, <laughs> the different charting of where each witness has come down on some of these key disagreements about whether there was quid pro quo bribery, what happened at that infamous meeting, whether the fact that in the White House where many pictures are often taken, does picture taking alone wipe out whether someone <laughs> then raised something to the lawyers and, and we are seeing accounts that suggest no, which cuts against Mr. Sondland. Another point that, that came up earlier that you raised that I think is so important is where does Donald Trump stand? He's not strictly denying this anymore. Right. He is quoting himself, call it a sort of a self-referential hearsay, I denied this after I got in trouble and Gordon Sondland mentioned my denial. So look at that. That's not really evidence. That's just a not guilty plea that's been repeated in a, a kind of a weird loop, kind of a retweet, if you want to call it that, right. for 2019. But here's the problem with that. Gordon Sondland just said under oath that they did do quid pro quo bribery. He hasn't been fired for that, Nicole. He right. hasn't been relieved of his post. The White House is not coming out and dealing with that in any way, perhaps because they can't, or perhaps because they're afraid of what else he might even say, how much worse it could even get right. if they cut him loose. In any normal scenario, take Iran Contra, a scandal where bad things happened, uh, but investigations did not prove that, that the president was involved, they cut people loose who they said did the bad things. Right. Gordon Sondland admitted just now that he was at the center of a plot to do a bad thing. Not only that, he brought receipts of emails that showed Pompeo and Mulvaney. I don't think this is fully sunk in. Uh, Pompeo and Mulvaney were on the email plotting about how that call in advance with Ukraine was going to be about the investigation. So all that stacks up. The one other point I would make that, that is uh, less helpful to Democrats, maybe slightly helpful to Republicans, is I, I, don't, I don't think David Holmes was a very effective witness today. I don't think it matters much because all he was really doing was confirming some other things. But you see where experience comes into play. Miss Hill and some of these other witnesses, so experienced, so factual, so focused. Um, Mr. Holmes, who was around for way less important stuff, went on the longest and included a lot of superfluous detail. It doesn't matter in the big scheme of things, but as we track the witnesses, I thought that was notable. And he also did delve into policy at one point, saying, oh, the president didn't bring up our policy recommendations on the call. That doesn't matter. The president can ignore uh, embassy staff if he wants. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.